Hi guys, welcome to our first class for the summer session of computer assisted legal research. Um, we're gonna do our course overview, talk about sources of law, um, internet searching, finding local counsel and um, assignment. I guess we're really, really not gonna do a course overview. I went over the syllabus with you. We go through um, Westlaw, Lexis, then we do free sites, um, some government sites, and then do some other paid databases that are not Lexis and Westlaw. Um, we learn about citation. It's more of a skills type class than a theoretical type class like fundamentals was. So that's the course. Oh, here it is. Here's our course overview. Um, yeah do some advanced internet searching. We're going to work on that this week or this, this class actually, uh, researching and filling out forms, blue book, Westlaw, Lexis, you know, primary law on official sites, free sites that are, um, put out by government entities, other paid re research sites, talk about legal ethics, corporation research, and do federal agency stuff. There's no textbook. So you really have to watch the lectures, do the classwork, Otherwise, you're not going to get anything out of the class, and I don't think that's what anybody wants. All right, so our sources of a law, we um, are most concerned with primary law, what the actual laws that we follow, not secondary laws, which are tools that help us learn about the law or find the law. Okay, so for case law, which are the written opinions of courts, also called common law, before we start searching online, we have to have some information. Um, what is our jurisdiction that we're interested in? Okay, jurisdiction, where is it? Is it a state case, a state legal issue, or a federal legal issue? If it's state, what state? If it's federal, what circuit? You want to, um, these databases are huge, and you want to be able to make smart choices about where you're searching so you can eliminate the junk and avoid wasting your time. Um, hopefully you remember from fundamentals, um, the precedent rules, what is mandatory authority and what is persuasive authority. So mandatory authority would be in your own jurisdiction on a higher court on the same or substantially similar issue. Persuasive authority is really anything else. Um, so again, that's why your jurisdiction is import important. Okay, I just talked about that, awesome. Statutes, that's our codes, right? They're enacted by whatever legislature is in charge, be it federal, state, or municipal. Again, your location, your jurisdiction is important here. Um, if we're searching for federal statutes, we're looking in the U.S. Code for Illinois. It's called the Illinois Compiled Statutes. And sometimes, even though it's a statutory issue, we do look at case law um, when dealing with a statute question because courts interpret statutes, and courts can also they also have the power to strike statutes as unconstitutional. Okay, so that's our code. Those are our, you know, case law, statutory law. And hopefully this is a review. Then we also have court rules. Court rules are usually codified in the code, but things like if you're in a civil case, the rules of how you proceed in a civil case are called the rules of civil procedure. Analogously, the rules of criminal procedure for criminal cases rules of evidence for both civil and criminal cases, and then Supreme Court rules. And there also might be rules unique to a particular court or particular jurisdiction. Um, then we have administrative law. We have regulations, we have rules, we have agency decisions. These are put out by agencies, either federal agencies or state agencies for federal agencies, you're going to find those in the code of federal regulations. Um, and then there's the Illinois code of regulations, you know, for the state one, you'll have a different one. Um, you can often go to the agency site to find those, or, you know, again, Lexis or Westlaw. 
secondary sources. So secondary sources, secondary sources of law are materials that are not law. Okay. They are materials that help you understand the law, how to interpret the law, or even how to find the primary law. So examples of that are the restatements. Restatements are uh, put out by a, in a, uh, an organization called American Law Institute, and they come up with a legal topic, say torts, and then you have these kind of like think tank of scholars, and they come up, they look through the common law, and they create a code out of that. So there's going to be a restatement under, there's like, I don't know, a couple hundred restatements, I think. Um, maybe not that many, but there's a bunch <laughs> But a particular topic, you know, real estate, torts, contracts, um, conflict of laws, there's a bunch of them. So that's um, then treatises, which are books on a certain legal topic, digests, which are tools to help you find cases, annotations to statutes, law reviews, which are... Um, articles written by oftentimes, well, legal law professors, law scholars, and law students on a very, very particular topic. Citators like Shepherds and Keysight, model rules, practice guides. Okay, so those are all of things that you can do. You can find. That's our law. Primary law, secondary law. Um, so if we're just starting with internet searching, things we need to know, where to search, how to search, and most importantly, how to determine if information is reliable. We know the adage that if it's on the internet, it's true, which that is not true. So we have to make sure wherever we're searching, we're at a reliable website that we can count on and therefore tell the attorney we're working for or the client that this information is reliable that we found. Um, so when I Google search, I am not searching every word in the World Wide Web. I'm searching the Google index. Okay, so searching Google, I'm searching Google's index. And that comes up, they have these little, little web crawlers and spiders um, that go out into this World Wide Web, right? It's a spider, it's a web. And then it reports back this information to the search engine, which creates in indexes, right? So Google, so when we are searching Google, we are searching the Google index and not the World Wide Web. So that's why you get different stuff if you do a Google search or if you do an MS, um, a Bing search, because you're searching different indexes. And, you know, so Bing seems kind of more commercially oriented. Google was kind of everything. So if you're searching Google, you're searching basically the largest index. Um, so there are people who work in an industry called search engine optimization or SEO. And they are people who work for web creators and they specialize in driving traffic to a website. So the programmers tailor their website design to draw these crawlers. And when you are doing a Google search, you want to be high in the placement, the natural placement of the hits. So you'll see, you notice when you do a Google search, right? The first things you get are the ads. And then after that, you get the natural search results. So that's what you want to think about when you're when you're looking at this stuff and when you're compiling your search is how do you get exactly what you want? Yeah, okay. So this is, you know, your crawlers, they're, they discover, they store the links, and then they index it. Then you're searching the index, and then you get a ranking and your return of results. Okay, so yeah, if you're an SEO programmer, you want your website to appear high in this natural results listing. And the search, searcher, us, the researcher, um, our goal is to get the most response results high in this natural results listing. So we're, we eliminate junk and um, stuff that is really not what we want and or not reliable. And we know that the paid results are first. You see that in any search that you do. The prime real estate is um, who is paying the search engine to um, appear first. Okay. Always beware what is an ad versus real search results. That's important too. 
Okay, I'm going to pause here and then we'll start with another lecture in a minute.